Former Hewlett Packard Enterprise CEO Meg Whitman, former Walt Disney Studios Chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg, closing a $1 billion funding round for their new mobile video startup, New TV. Nearly every major media company is getting in early, including Disney, Alibaba, Fox, and our parent, NBC Universal. Let's get out to Julia Borston, who's sitting down with Whitman and Katzenberg in a CNBC exclusive. Hey, Julia. Carl, thanks so much. And Jeffrey, Meg, thank you both so much for joining us today. After announcing this big news, a billion dollars, as Carl just said, from every major media company pretty much, plus Alibaba and a bunch of banks as well. What are you going to do with this billion dollars? Well, it's about the billion dollars, but more importantly, every single major Hollywood studio joined in this round along with, as you pointed out, technology companies and strategic financial investors. And they share our vision of creating an entirely new entertainment platform that's optimized for easy, on-the-go mobile viewing and allows the top talent here in Hollywood to tell stories in an entirely new way. So, did, so we're going to use the money for content and helping those storytellers, you know, tell their stories in a new way, which is going to be premium content in uh, delivered in bite-sized formats. So does that mean all those investors are committed to providing a certain amount of content? Well, the Hollywood studios want to provide content for this new platform because it's a growth area for the studios. It allows storytellers to tell stories in an entirely new way, and it's optimized for on-the-go viewing, which is a very different use case. So what does that actually mean? When's it going to launch? How much will it cost? And what will the app be like? Yeah. Well, you can talk about when it's going to launch. Keep going. You're doing it. <laughs> love it. She's killing it. Um, well, it's going to launch, we hope, in the fall of 2019, Christmas of 2019. Um, there's a lot of work to do between now and then, so there's a chance that it slips a bit because we want to make sure we've got exactly the right content and the right quality of content. And uh, we're starting now. We're Really, today is the first day of this new company. We've moved into our new offices in West Hollywood and uh, in you know, temporary workspace. It's a, like a temporary work like a WeWork space called Serendipity, and we're hiring and uh, starting to commission content, and Jeffrey is leading the, uh, the content charge, and I'm leading the technology and, and business charge. So, Jeffrey, in terms of the content, there's so much out there right now. There's Netflix, there's Hulu, so many over-the-top subscription services, and a lot of concern that maybe we're at peak TV, more TV series out there than ever. Why do we need another app? Well, I think that what we're filling is actually a completely different uh, experience. You get up every day, you leave your house, and you take your television set with you. And in the course of that day, you are spending right now, you, Julia, are spending about four hours a day on this device, on social media, uh, communicating, collaborating, playing casual games, and you are watching over an hour of short form content. And what we want to do is to grab about 20 minutes of that time and offer people now a quality of storytelling and the best of what Hollywood has to offer backed in a subscription service which allows us to invest the kind of money that you get in traditional television to make that experience exceptional. So today, <clears throat> in short form, the high end of what you're watching, and by the way, we admire the work that's been done. It's, in, it's innovative, it's creative, but it's about two or three or four thousand dollars a minute. On a typical scripted television show that you're referring to, it's $100,000 a minute. And what you can do with that kind of resource and the talent that you can bring um, is just quite unique and quite differentiated. But if you talk about the kind of content, I mean, obviously, people are used to getting content for free, short form content for free on Facebook and on YouTube. They also may already subscribe to a Netflix or a Hulu or an HBO Go. And people seem to be watching a lot of those, you know, half an hour shows on their mobile devices. How are you going to convince them that it's worth paying for content that's the length that they're used to getting for okay. free? So I would say, Julia, you know, there's t uh, many use cases, um, you know, in the past that I think exemplify why when you actually come along with something that is exceptional, that is convenient, that is premium, people will migrate to it if in fact it delivers on the promise. Two great examples. HBO comes along in the 1990s and says we're not TV, we're HBO. And the content that they made, even though there was all the television in the world, it was all free, all available, many, many, tens of millions of people went to HBO because what they did offer was exceptional, both in quality, standards and practices, no commercials, etc. We believe what you have in short form today and what we are delivering in new form will be the delta, the exception, you know, the exceptionalness of that will be as great. I'll give you another example, music. Six years ago, all music was free and all music was available. 
there are 150 million people today paying $10 a month for music because Spotify and Apple came along and made it convenient. They didn't change the music, by the way. They didn't improve it. They just made it a, 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 a better experience you know, for you to curate and get your music and recommend it. So I'm pretty confident that what we're going to deliver is exceptional relative to what is available free today. And there'll be some percentage of people that will, you know, migrate to that and, and be attracted to it. And wh how, wh how big do you think the market is? Well, we think the market is enormous, right? There's, you know, two billion people who are spending over an hour a day mm -hmm. viewing video today on their mobile. But as Jeffrey said, the content needs to be differentiated, but so does the tech platform. We need to optimize um, viewing video on your mobile in a way that has not been done before. And how does Alibaba fit into that? Yeah. Are you partnering with them on the tech platform? Well, they're going to be very helpful to us. They're doing a lot of very innovative things, and it's a collaboration um, around the technology as well as the content. So we're excited about what they can bring to the table, but we're assembling a, you know, A-list uh, group of engineers here, here actually in L.A. We've decided to have the engineering team here in L.A. to do something that has not been done before to get that video on mobile looking fantastic. Think about what you can now do in photography on mm -hmm. mobile. Now we're going to do that on video. Great. David, David Faber wants to jump in here. Uh, thanks, Julia. Meg, always good to see you. It's been a little while, of course, all it those years been. every quarter. Um, <laughs> on, this, on the subject of, of wireless, actually, back to technology a bit, your, your old haunt, 5G is coming. It's a ways away. But I do wonder, for a service like this, do you have a vision of how it will enhance it or change it and what you're able to deliver? So I think everyone agrees that 5G will enable video on mobile to look even better than it does today. And just for historical perspective, David, you have to remember five years ago, just five years ago, watching mobile on your, uh, watching video on your mobile was not a great experience. Do you remember sort of the buffering and the freezing? That is largely solved, but think about what 5G will be able to do in terms of display, sound, instant discovery. I mean, there will be a lot of very powerful things brought to bear. So we think that's another element of the wind at our back for this new venture. Uh, and, and Jeffrey, a quick question to you as well, more from the investment perspective. I just, barriers to entry, if you in fact are correct, as you very well may end up being here, th that this is something that people want, what stops Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and all of your uh, well-capitalized competitors from making it an offering to their customers as well and moving more strongly into this area that you may pioneer? Will there be enough market share for everybody to share? or do you risk actually getting disintermediated by them? Well, I, again, David, I think what we are building both in terms of what uh, Meg uh, is designing in terms of the platform itself and to make this a mobile first product, that is not the case for any of the people that you just named. And you take Netflix, literally less than 10% of Netflix is viewing, less than 10% of Hulu's viewing is actually mobile. And it's not optimized for it either. Uh, and the content itself, which is primarily an hour length, is also not optimized for on-the-go, in-between viewing. So at the outset, I think we will have a very strong first mover advantage. But like anything, if we are right and if it is successful, others will follow. HBO succeeded, came Showtime, and then Stars. CBS started in network television pretty quickly on the heels, NBC, ABC, Fox. So. You know, I don't think either of us sit here and think like, well, you know, this is we're the only ones who are going to do this. But uh, I think with the financial backing, the incredible partnership from the content providers, our partners represent, you know, 75 or 80 percent of the top show running talent uh, creators in in the business, as well as probably the best IP in the world. We have a lot of great. Uh, wind in our sail, as Meg uh, likes to say, and so um, I think we'll be off to, you know, a good start. Will others follow? Probably. I'd also yeah. say, David, uh, and, there's there's something to be said for focus. You know, this is the only business that we're in, and we aim to make this business, which is for a use case that's quite different. You know, you take, as Jeffrey said, a TV in your pocket every day, and you 10 minutes happens all the time. You're waiting at a doctor's office. You're on your you know, commute, and it's taking longer. You're waiting for a friend for dinner. And we want to take that 10 minutes, and we want to make those moments extraordinary by the service that we're offering, which is a different strategy than, uh, than the companies that you mentioned. Well, Meg, that was, of course, a focus was one of the themes that uh, came out from our many interviews during the years you ran HP uh, Enterprise. But another was the rate of change, which you continually said only increases and puts pressure on decision makers like 
both you and Jeffrey. So what gives you the confidence that given how quickly the world is changing, you're making the right decisions now and will be positioned properly for a service, as you said, that is not going to be available for some time? Yeah. Well, I think the good news is um, we've done we've seen a lot of patterns. We're, we're pretty good now at pattern recognition, having had two long careers in, in Hollywood and Silicon Valley. And we really are, I think, bringing the very best of Hollywood and Silicon Valley together. And we just have to stay nimble. I'll tell you one other thing, David, you will totally appreciate. It is fantastic not having a legacy platform. To be able to build this platform de novo with the latest technology, with the latest uh, behavioral analytics and things is, is a real joy. One of the patterns that we're hearing a lot about in Hollywood is cord cutting. Is this going to be a tool for cord cutters? And are you ultimately getting all the media companies to invest in a platform that could cannibalize their core business? I don't think this is, again, I, this is not a zero sum game. Pe people are already, as it makes said, there are two billion people watching an hour of this content a day. We don't think we contribute to, to accelerate, you know, the cord cutting. That's a much bigger decision that people are making. Um, and certainly generationally, since this is very targeted at 25 to 30 year olds, this is the old thing. We're skating to where the hockey puck is going, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we're not sort of looking back at it. So, and, and to your question, David, I would say to you, these two old dogs, we still know how to hunt. So, <laughs> I, I prefer we are up and comers in this new space as opposed to old dogs. But I'll take it. Another big trend that we've been watching the industry just, just transform the business in the past year is media M and A. And a number of your investors are in the process of merging. You have Disney buying Fox. There are two of your investors. You have Warner Media, which is now owned by AT and T. How does this consolidation change your business? Well, the thing that's so fantastic about this, and you know this because we've actually been talking about this for well over a year or 18 months is through all of that M&A and the sort of you know sort of realignments that have gone on we've plowed forward in this and the reason is is that I think every one of them look at this as something new differentiated from their own strategy and complementary and that's why every time someone says you know Hulu or HBO or Netflix or ABC or CBS or you know NBC we're actually going to allow there to be the next evolution into this new form, um, which you know we think is a, is a growth opportunity, and most importantly, our partners agree. Um, another big story in Hollywood over the past year has been this wave of um, allegations of sexual misconduct and gender discrimination. As you build a new company today, how do you make sure it doesn't fall prey to the issues that have, you know, there have been accusations about at a range of companies most recently, just last week with CBS? So we are really focused jointly on building a company for the long term with the right mission, the right vision, the right values. And we have to lay that down early. The great thing about building a new company is you get to lay that culture down early and we have a really shared vision of how we want to do that. Inclusiveness, fairness, meritocracy, bringing out the very best in people. And I think, you know, our careers, we embody that in many ways. And listen, I, I you know, I'm, uh, I think we, we are both, it is top of mind, it's not incidental. In a way, we have the advantage of starting with a clean slate in a new era. And the rules of the past don't apply anymore, you know, for, me, I have always been blessed to work with incredibly strong women, you know, in, in every aspect of, of my career. You know it, DreamWorks Animation. Um, uh, we had a, a tremendous representation of women in the leadership of the company and in production of it. And, you know, for me, in reaching out and being uh, lucky to be able to get Meg Whitman, one of the most accomplished executives in American business in the last decades, you know, is just uh, a coup. And, you know, as I say to, to Meg, I know what I know, I know what I don't know, and I know she knows what I don't know. So having her as the leader of this and the CEO of it, I think just puts us off on a great start. And Meg, you are a rare female CEO in this country. I mean, just yesterday we had the news of Andrew Nui stepping yep. down. Just a final question, why do you think there are so few, few female CEOs and what will it take to change that? Yeah. So I think, first of all, there are more than there were when I started in my career. You know, I graduated from business school in 1979. So there has been change. 
but there needs to be more focus on women on boards of directors, on bringing up and nurturing women in their careers and giving them the opportunities to prove what they can do. And uh, so I think every leader now in most major companies and certainly in our startup, we're going to be focused on giving women, but not only women, everyone an opportunity to shine and, and do their very best work. Great. Well, we are very curious to see what is going to come of new TV. I can't wait to find out when it's going to launch, how much it's going to cost and what exactly it's going to look like. So I hope you'll come back on and well, share that with us. We can't wait to see what the CNBC version is yeah. on new TV. <laughs>